Welcome to Stuff and Whiskey. I'm Josh. And I'm Aaron. And we're back with another Totally Blind Head to Head where we react to the pours and the prices before we find out what we're drinking. If it's an available pour, is it worth the money? If it's hard to find, is it worth the hype and the hunt? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome to the channel, bringing a real world perspective to the real world whiskey consumer. We're not pro whiskey tasters, but we will randomly select one of these matchups to taste totally blind so that you get our completely honest opinions separate and apart from any bias or hype or labels. In the end, we'll give each pour what we call a real world score, which is based on the blind tasting as well as the price and the availability and whether we would buy it again or not. And if you like blind tastings like this, go ahead and give this video a like, give it a thumbs up. It helps us out, pushes this video out to other people. Yep, we do these every Thursday and you can also hit the bell to be notified of the upcoming videos. While you're down there, you can also check out the video description for a link to our Patreon. Over there, we do all kinds of stuff. It's like the interactive element of the channel. You can get plugged in. We have bonus content where we do two additional videos every week. And we also do blind flight nights and sample shares with our patron community, as well as giveaways and all that stuff. So check that out down below. And if you feel like you want any stuff on whiskey merch, go ahead and go to stuffandwhiskey.com and you can check out all the things. Yeah, we're a terrible salesman. We're not wearing any of it right now, but no. you can see it down there. Yeah. All right, let's run our randomizer and see which one of these 18 pairs we're tasting today. 10. 10. So that's nine. So 10 is going to be the first ones down there. All right. Cool. We're going to get these poured and we'll be right back with our first impressions on each pour. All right, let's get into our first impressions on glass one. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. This is a little stinky feet reminiscent. Oh, we're getting the stinky feet. But like, You've been outside. <laughs> outside stinky feet? Uh-huh. Are you inside now, though? Yeah. Okay, so you were so outside, you, now you're inside. So you smell a little bit of the outside. That's okay. it. That's what yeah. I got. <laughs> to me, I am getting, like, a grape popsicle and a cherry popsicle, like you're double fisting, and you have both. And you're getting both of those grape and cherry notes. It's kind of sugary. I, the, I think the funkiness of the stinky feet is a little bit of the oak coming through. Let's get into the palate on this one. It okay. smells quite nice. It does. Whoa, this is artificial cherry, but it's not bad. Yeah, I'm getting more artificial grape. It's not as sweet as I thought it was gonna be. On the nose, it smelled much more kind of sugary. granulated, sugary. Mm -hmm. On the palate, that's getting tempered down with some of the oak. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Let's go in for one more sip. Okay. I'm enjoying the first sip so far. Good easy sipper. I get the the double fisting grape, grape cherry popsicle. Ooh, this might be a little higher proof than I thought. I don't think it's very high proof. I think it's, there's a little bit of spice. You're getting, the oak is really cutting through the sugary sweetness. Mm -hmm. You've, you've said this note before, but popsicle sticks. Yep. Like there's a definite popsicle stick vibe on this. Mm -hmm. The finish is lingering around. It's pretty oily. I would say it's an easy sipper. That's kind of the category I put it in, Okay. but it is more interesting than a lot of easy sippers. With that said, let's get into glass two and find right. out what it's up against. This smells like I just walked into Home Depot. Really? Yeah. Like a woodiness? Yeah. Okay, this is funny. To me, I'm getting I'm getting a little bit of that, but the predominant thing I'm getting on this compared to the grape and cherry popsicle, with this, I'm getting kind of like a pancake, syrupy, battery, like a, a pancake, fried dough. Yeah. I, I think I can get that, but the first thing that hit my brain was I just walked into Home Depot. Getting a little bit of nuttiness too. Like it's like, um, it's almost like pancakes with maple syrup and like, like nuts. Do people do that? Nobody does that, do they? People put like walnuts on their pancakes. Okay. Well, that, this is what that is then. Okay. Let's get into the palate. Okay. I feel like this tastes a lot similar to the first one, but maybe a little more watery. A little, it's not quite as, as viscous yeah mm -hmm. it's funny because the the sweetness that was cut by the oak in glass one glass two on the on the palate is coming across with a little bit more sweetness a little on the less, palate. less oak yeah so it's it, it smelled more dark mm -hmm. on the nose but it's coming across a little bit more sweet on the palate whereas glass one came across really sweet on the nose a little bit more woody on the palate mm -hmm. let's go one more sip on glass two okay. it's very artificial cherry reminiscent like similar to the first one yeah i got more of the fruit there on the second sip these are actually really close and the second sip on the second glass 
came across a little bit more oily, which was very similar to the first glass. Mm -hmm. So we're going to need to spend some proper time with these two, yep. clear our palate, start with the second glass. We're going to do all that off camera right now because I take way too long <laughs> and we'll be back with our full thoughts on both these pours right after this. All right, after we spend some time with these, let's find out what our scores are and then we'll talk about it. So let's start with glass one. Okay. Where are you at? Thumbs up on nose for glass one. Very good. Thumbs up on flavor and thumbs up on experience. On the same place, thumbs up on nose, thumbs up on flavor, thumbs up on, this is behind the box. Thumbs up on nose, flavor, and experience <laughs> on glass one. <laughs> let's go on to glass two okay. and then we'll talk about how these compare. So where are you at? So it gets the same thumbs up on nose, thumbs up on flavor, thumbs up on experience good, solid all around. Yep. Same for me. Thumbs up on nose, flavor, and experience on glass two as well. After spending some time with these two, how do you feel like they compared? So so the more I drank them, the more they tasted the same to me. Yeah. So they still smelled kind of different. Like we initially talked about glass one smelled a little sweeter on the nose. Glass two smelled a little darker on the nose. But then the more I drank them, I went, you know, one to two, then two to one, and then two to one. And, and they just... I felt like I was tasting the same thing. And so I had to stop. Yeah. It's funny, as I was taking notes on these two, I wrote that basically if there's a theme for this matchup, whatever it is, it's sugary sweet. Mm. That's like, that's the theme. And then the way that they go about doing that is a little bit different. Whereas like glass one is a little bit more leaning towards the candy side of the equation okay. or like a popsicle or something. Glass two is leaning a little bit more towards like the candy bar side of the equation, like with a little bit of chocolate. And my notes on glass two, I said on the nose, caramel, vanilla, and pralines, like a nice, like that, mm, okay. that, that candied praline, candied, uh, what are pecans? Yeah. Or pecans, whatever people say, pecans. And then, uh, on the nose or on the palate, glass two was like a little bit more pastry esque. Like it had a little bit more, a little bit more darkerness to it. I don't, that's not a word. I'm not getting any of that, I'm making but stuff up. you do you. And I will say I preferred the flavor profile on glass two, but I preferred the experience on glass one a little bit. Like glass one was a little bit more oily and had a little bit better of a finish, Okay. but it was almost too sweet. Like okay. it was kind of like almost cloyingly sweet. Mm -hmm. Whereas glass two was a little thin and nutty and dry yeah. on the finish. And it was a little short on the finish compared to glass one, but not enough to mark it down. They're both good. Same, yeah. I would put both of these in like that, what I call the easy sipper category. I mean, I think they're fairly low proof. I think they're both enjoyable pours. They're both kind of generally sweet. Yeah. But there's something there in each glass to be somewhat interesting and not completely boring. So That's true, yeah. Yeah. Pretty good pours overall. Thumbs up across the board for us means that it's like a good solid pour. I hope both of these are readily available. I hope they're no more than about $30. Yeah. That's about what this proof point and flavor profile I think should get you. Let's find out. Let's find out how much these cost first, okay. then find out what we've been drinking. Right. So did you have a preference? If I had to pick probably glass two, Okay. but honestly, I wouldn't be mad at glass one. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't really have a preference either. It's kind of a flip of the coin. Yeah. They're kind of the same coin, just two different little, sides. They go about their business a little different way. Yeah. So glass number one is number 27 and glass number two is number 28. Okay. So let's find out price first on glass one, number 27. $30. Perfect. Cool. Glass number two. $30. Fine. I'm happy with that on both glasses. Yeah. That's about what they should cost for what you're getting. So I feel like the value's already there. Mm -hmm. Let's find out what they are. What's glass one, number 27? Uh, Weller Special Reserve. Really? 90 proof. Okay. Well, the sugary sweetness and almost cloying sweetness makes sense. What's glass two, number 28? Maker's Mark 46. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. All right. This is an interesting discussion. This is an interesting matchup. Why I is, forgot we had this why is in this our... interesting? Well, because Weller Special Reserve is a product that's not available in almost any market. And some stores sell this online for like $100 or $120. Are you serious? Yeah, and, and some stores mark it up to that too, but okay. a lot of times it just doesn't exist. Like in our market, Weller Special Reserve just does not exist. How do we get this? I actually had to buy this on secondary from somebody for 40 bucks. Oh, wow. But if it were available, it would have been 30, 20. It's supposed to be like a $22 bottle, like Texas and Ohio are the only places that get Weller Special Reserve. Okay. But it should be about a $25 bottle with tax. In our market, when it has been available, 
every so often. It's about a $30 bottle. It gets marked up a little bit, but some stores do mark it up in other markets too, a hundred dollars okay. or more. Wow. Maker's Mark 46 is available on pretty much any shelf anywhere, anywhere between like $28 on sale up to like $35, depending on the store, if they mark it up. But in our market, it's usually about 30 bucks okay. and super readily available. So when we talk about our real world scores and our retail and consumer metrics, that is why this is such an interesting discussion mm. because of how close they were. So let's get into it. Okay. Retail and consumer scores. Retail being the retail side of the equation. Yep. What is it? Is it even available? Can you buy it and how much does it cost? Right. She said it way better. And then as a consumer, would you buy it again or not? Okay. So let's start with Weller Special Reserve. Okay. Let's say you find it for $30. Great. I but mean, you can't really find it in our market. The price is good. If I could find it, it'd be fine, but I'm not going to hunt for it. So I'm going to give it just okay. Yeah. If it's not available, what's the point? But if you walked into a store and you saw it sitting on a shelf for 25 or 30 bucks, would you pick it up? Probably not. Okay. I'm but not, you're not a hard pass. I'm not a hard pass, but I'm a probably not. So I'm going to give it just okay. Okay. For me, Weller Special Reserve, it's just not available in our market. So even though the price is really good, I got to give it a thumbs down. I got to give it a thumbs down. Mm -hmm. I slurred a little bit there. Not even drunk. You know, I don't know why that happens sometimes. You but talk fast. I do talk fast sometimes. But thumbs down on retail. Honestly, I can find almost every other Weller more than I can find special reserve really? in our market. Okay. But would I buy it again or not for 25 or 30 bucks? I'll give it a just okay as well. That cloying sweetness is almost a bit much for me. And you like sweet. I like sweet, yeah. but that's, it's almost a bit too much. Yeah. Now let's move on to Makers 46. Okay. So retail, 30 bucks, flush. It's everywhere. You can yeah. buy 46 anytime you want. How are you feeling about that? Um. I'm going to give it a thumbs up on retail score because the price and the availability is good. I'm honestly going to give it just okay on consumer score because for me personally, it's not a flavor profile that I would tend to gravitate towards. I like it yeah. when it's given to me, but I'm not going to go out and spend my money dollars on it. Yeah. That makes sense. That's fair. For me, I'll say it's two thumbs up on retail score. For 35, it's starting to get more like one thumbs up, but for 30 bucks, which we can usually readily find it for. Okay. I'm gonna give it two thumbs up for like a good high quality weeded bourbon that's available as easily as this is. Yeah. I gotta give it that. And then would I buy it again or not? Thumbs up, I put a preliminary mark by this as thumbs up before I even knew what it was. And I'm gonna stick by that because the price and the availability are so good. And you don't have to hunt for it, which is a bonus for us because we don't like hunting. So we get our real world score by adding up the thumbs you see on the screen. There are 10 possible points available, but this ain't William LaRue or Bill Samuel's 10 point scoring system. No, it's more like a bell curve. And the way those work is that most things fall in the middle of them. And you gotta be outside of that midpoint range, that middle range, the four to six range to be something remarkable or unremarkable as the case yeah. may be. With that said, let's get into our scores for these two pours. Weller Special Reserve Glass 1, where are you at on Real World Score? So for me, it gets a 4 out of 10, which is at the bottom of the midpoint range, but still solid for what it is. Yeah. For me, Weller Special Reserve is going to get a 3.5 out of 10. And that's, you know, just slightly outside. And a lot of that is due to the fact that I'm not big on lower proof and mm -hmm. I don't appreciate the headache involved in trying to get your hands on something like this. Yeah. So, Realistically, three and a half, four is about right for what you're getting for the money. Yeah. Let's move on to Maker's Mark 46. Where are you at for real world score on it? So it gets just slightly higher at a 4.5. The, yeah. the availability did help that. Yeah. And that's kind of reflective because you did prefer it slightly more today. I did today. prefer it slightly more yeah. today. That being said, though, they're still not at the higher end of the yeah. thing. For me, Maker's Mark 46 is going to get a 6 out of 10. Oh, wow. A lot of that is grading it on its availability mm -hmm. and the fact that it is a high quality weeded bourbon mm -hmm. that you can get fairly easily if you want something that's generally smooth, fairly sweet. You know, it, it has its place in the market and I feel like it does a really good job. It's maybe the best product at what it does in the market as far as being readily available without the headache of something like this to try to get your hands on. So who are these for? Well, they're not for me. Why aren't they for you? I, the flavor profile is just not something I would gravitate towards. They're good yeah. for what they are, but what they are isn't something that I'm gonna reach for. Yeah. 
low proof, kind of overly sweet. Yeah. Isn't really your bag. Overly sweet. I don't mind the low proof. It's the overly sweet. I, I just, I don't, I can't drink very much of it. I, I need yeah. something a little spicier. Yeah. <laughs> Which is clearly, obviously. Obviously you. <laughs> no. For me, I think these are for anybody who is kind of new into bourbon or if you want that pour that's like a little bit of an like an easy sipper, a smooth pour. These both very much fit that type of vibe. Mm -hmm. They're kind of sweet. They're kind of simple, but not so much to be boring. Not like boring. I said, yeah, they're not boring. so you're getting two good products here, but with the pipe behind Weller, don't think you're getting an amazing product. Like you saw our yeah. reaction to it. It like didn't blow us away. They literally started tasting very similar to me as I kept drinking them. Yeah. I was like, which one's which? We're less of like a whiskey review channel and more of like a whiskey reaction channel. And we taste blind so that you can see our reactions blind. And you could clearly see that while we both thought that both of these are fairly solid, neither of them blew us away. Know that if you're gonna spend more than about 30 bucks, 35 bucks for either one of these products, what you're paying for is the hype and the rarity mm -hmm. rather than the quality of the liquid inside the bottle. Boy, that was a hard sentence to get out. I don't know why. You made it though. I'm proud <laughs> yeah, of you. Here we go. We <laughs> made it. And if you made it this far in the video, <laughs> good on wow. you. I'm actually, that was an actual legitimate transition yeah. that wasn't forced or cheesy. No. Nope. And I just ruined it by calling it out, but I was a little proud of myself. So we're going to pat myself on the back here. But if you've made it this far in the video and you want to know more about what we do here at the channel, you can find our email address at the video description in the video description below stuff and whiskey at gmail.com. And every year in October, we do a charity fundraiser live stream that you can get more information on as well. And you can even donate a bottle to that if you would like. So hit us up down there if you want more info. So I guess that's it for this week. Till next week, guys. Cheers. Cheers. All right, I am going to change up my intro to say stuff and whiskey instead of stuff and whiskey. Okay. Is that eyelash? Yep. I saved your life. Oh, thank you. You're so nice. You're very welcome. You're a nice guy. All right. You're a swell gal. Thanks. Welcome to Stuff and Whiskey. I'm, I'm Josh. <laughs> <laughs> I think my cat changed the cadence and threw I you know, all it off. Threw me you off. were like, what's happening? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Welcome to Stuff and Whiskey. I'm Josh. And I'm Aaron. And we're back with another totally blind head to head where we react to the pours and the prices before we find out what we're drinking. If it's an available pour, is it worth the money? If it's hard to find, is it worth the hype and the hunt? Stay tuned to find out. See, that was like a more mellow cadence to yeah, the intro. That was good. And I'm going to try to talk less during the episodes. No. I mean, yes. Yes. But I, I, bet I, I, I didn't want that to be an I have to talk more. <laughs> okay. No. The idea is that I talk less and the episodes get a little shorter. I'm fine with that. <laughs> okay. I'm fine with that. Yeah. It's weird when you, when you don't talk so much, things seem to go by faster. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? It's a mind-blowing uh, strategy there. <laughs> yeah. You and every viewer of our channel ever is like, finally, he gets it. Okay.